me, you're the guy to get it done. Hey, Jojo. <laughs> Who's we? I did. Yes. <laughs> Glad you noticed. Hey, boy. Game day, baby. Game day. Get in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. The event staff is around the corner, you see. Mm -hmm. Hey, babe. Go on in there. Uh-huh. Uh, this is for players and coaches only. Just go with my regular name. job to know the roster. I'm Taylor Bennett. I'm working the sidelines tonight. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna record them. Okay. All right. So, we all know your situation tonight, but we really don't know much about you as a quarterback. How would you describe your style of play? Oh, um, well, I, oh man. Hey, what's something? I, I like to get the ball out quick. Get in my receiver's hands. Let them do the rest. Okay. Now, how about your personality? Or better yet, how would your teammates describe you? How would my teammates describe me? Yeah, were you intense? You were cutthroat, a great leader, a jokester? Give me something. I guess you could say I always stay engaged with my teammates. As we go about the week, I want to make sure everyone's prepared and ready to do their job when we come there for game day. So a real team first, team player guy. Yeah, sure, you could say that. Yo, Taylor. Hey, can I borrow him for a second? Oh, yeah. Cool. Wait, hold up. You're a Heisman voter, right? Hey, I'm coming for that award next year. Look out for me. 
Oh, I will. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah? Because winning the national championship means everything to me. All right, I made a promise to my brother. And since I can't throw the ball to myself, we need to be on the same page, you feel me? Well, I got you, man. I got you. All right. All right. This one's gonna be tough. You can trick over edge defenders. All you gotta do is double tap. Set, go! Okay. Here we go! Set! In Tucson! As a quarterback, accuracy isn't about throwing the ball you receive, it's about throwing away from defender. Hold L while, you're, while you press the receiver, leaning towards right side. Set, go! the tallest receiver on, on the team, but I could jump high up L, R, L1 and push. High passes are great, but they're easy to intercept. If you want to play L2, Oh, 
you will be fast enough. Use L2 to run out of the pocket and then press the R3 to... Ready, go! Easiest pitch and catch. And you do that tonight, and we move on. I don't know what I did. <laughs> All right, I just talked to Coach. He insists on going with a simplified game plan for you tonight. What do you think? Well, his thinking is we keep it simple, you don't get overwhelmed, and then we rely on the defense to do their part. Wait, hold on. This, this is a joke? All right, look, Coach just wants to put him in the best position to succeed. No, this ain't high school ball, man. Or this is the semifinals. If we go out there and simplify, they're going to destroy us. Come on, this is crazy, right? Right? Agreed. Coach needs to wake up. I'm ready for this. Man, forget about him, man. Listen, I don't care how much you played. You're a leader on this team. Leaders, sometimes they have to do what's right, even if they don't like it. Got it, Coach. I got you. Yeah? <laughs> The 2018 college football season has been a wild one, and we are now down to four as EA Sports is proud to welcome you to AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Tonight, it's the first of our college football playoff semifinal matchups as we'll see the Oklahoma Sooners taking on the Texas Longhorns. What's up, bro? Good luck tonight. Thanks. Hey, man, don't listen to the critics. You got all the talent in the world. Just go out there and put on a show. Thanks. Means a lot. All right, man. Hit me up when you get to the league. Yeah. Man, that was Patrick Mahomes. Holy crap, I got to play? For the right to play for a national championship next Monday night in Santa Clara, we are underway from Arlington in the national playoff semifinal. And no run right, back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here we go, his first collegiate snap as the Longhorns have the football first and ten. They give to Slay here. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Second and four. And he'll hit his tight end, Walker. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 15 yards on the play, first down. A good throw there, but boy, a tough situation for this offense, for this program, really. When you think about it, Marcus Washington, four-year starter, came in as a true freshman to lead this team. He's third all-time in passing yards in school history, second in touchdowns, twice an All-American, a Heisman finalist, all that stuff. Never missed a game in his college career, 53 starts, but now he sits and watches as his understudy for the last four years finally gets his shot in the leading role. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get him about five yards. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Texas here in the college football playoff looking for what would be their fifth national title. They were a powerhouse back in the 60s and 70s, winning it in 63, 69, and 70. But then they waited 35 years before winning it again in 2005 and haven't won it since. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So they saw the contact before the ball arrived, 
penalty flag for pass interference. And trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers, and somehow, some way, they make plays on the football, and sometimes you're there too soon. They pick up 12 on the play, and the chains move. You know, you think back to what kind of parallels you can draw for what this young quarterback is trying to do, trying to lead a team to a national championship with so little experience. And the one name that I come back to, Cardell Jones at Ohio State back in the 2014 season. Very similar situation. Limited appearances through the first few years of his career. Then all of a sudden, he's thrust into the national spotlight, just like this young man has been. And all Jones was able to do, well, win a national championship and then move on to a career in the NFL. So it can definitely happen. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. And since the penalty occurred in the end zone, moved the ball to the one-yard line. First and goal from the one-yard line. Costly penalty. Here are the Longhorns now on first and goal. And he is not going to get through here on try number one. They stop him at the goal line. Call it no gain, and it's going to be second and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want to back who can create his own space, who can break down. And he is in. Touchdown, Longhorns. It's their quarterback keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Longhorns have taken the early lead. Fuck. So make that one drive, one touchdown for the college career of our quarterback. And we don't have to worry about it, but what if this drive had gone badly? Think about the spiral he could have fell into, the self-doubt, but zero doubt on that drive, in control, right from the start. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. There's first and 10 for the Sooners. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Oklahoma, such a proud football tradition, seeking their eighth national title. They were winners three times way back in the 50s, back-to-back -back champs in the 70s, and then added titles in 85 and in the year 2000, but they haven't won it since. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. On third down, Fulton. And it's into the hands of Edwards. 18 yards and a first down. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How he's got daylight. 20, 10, 5. And he will score. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Those are the drives that prove a lot. you got a rookie quarterback, Charles, you're on the road, takes him down, throws the touchdown pass. And in a game like this, with, as you described, a rookie quarterback, the team usually says, okay, we got to take care of this guy. we got to protect him. But when he goes out and plays like this on the first drive on the road, he doesn't have to say, I'm here to be your leader. They just need to follow him. This field at the two. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Longhorns come up here to begin their next drive. That last drive was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit with play action and throw the ball. 
And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big play on the catch and run, covering 34 yards. Well, that student section wasn't alive. They are alive and well now. That chunk play woke him up. It is starting to get really, really loud in here as this offense is on the move here in the first quarter. They'll run it now out of the gun. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And all the way down to the 17-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Going ground game with Slay. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now, Austin football. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. And again this time to the tailback. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. Out is the Oklahoma offense ready for their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. On the ground, it's gold. Now third down is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. To throw on third down, Fulton. In trouble, and he's taken down. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Fielded at about the 28. Breaks free again. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. That'll wind up being a 50-yard punt, though they do get 10 back on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Here's a first and 10, Texas. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. He's going to fire one deep over the... He's got a man complete. And he will score. Touchdown, Longhorns. He put quite a bit of air underneath that touchdown pass. Of course, we knew that he had the strong arm. That part was easy. You could see that throughout his college career. But what you want to know about a rookie is, when the pressure's on, can you throw with touch? He just did right there. And boy, it was pretty. Point after, right down the middle. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So now after the touchdown, the Longhorns get ready to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Sooner offense back out, ready for their next possession. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. 
They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now Fulton. He's got Gore. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Pushing the foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Oh, that's bull crap. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Here's Fulton to throw. It's complete. It's Gore. They pick up 11 in addition to moving the chains. That coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, but when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come up and put a hit on him, do they? And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating it. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, people say bring in your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Seven yards on the play, and it'll be second down. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Fulton sets to pass it. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Looking to throw. Fulton. Now they go screen. It's complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Fighting a safety valve here. That's complete. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. He went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. And his kick is good. And they're back within a touchdown. It's 17-10. to 10. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? That's the type of return that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the defense now. They've got to go out on the field almost like it's a sudden change, almost like it's a turnover. Maybe I'd go out there and try and stop them, but boy, what a tough spot they're in. On the carry, this is Slay. And he is in. Touchdown, Longhorns. A 12-yard touchdown run. And the Longhorns add on to that lead. 
And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, they almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. That's fielded in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Out is the Oklahoma offense ready for their next drive. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. Who's up? We up. Who's up? We up. Let's go. Hey, Ken. Just checking in with you. How do you feel about the first half? That's how we play. Let's go. Be a great first half. We keep doing what we're doing. We might win this thing. There's a lot of we's in that sentence. It's a good thing to recognize your teammates. But you remember, you're leading the charge tonight, all right? So get out there and let's put this thing away. Second half. Let's go. All right. I'm going to turn my AC on. Oh, okay. All right. Hey. Coach. Really good job out there in the first half. I, uh... I should have trusted you more. That's on me. I'm over it. All that matters is the win. All right. Can you handle it if I open up the playbook a little bit in the second half? Let's do it. Let's get him. Thanks, Coach. All right. The winner goes on, the loser goes home as we start the second half in this semifinal matchup right, from well, Arlington. We okay, this so is fielded right a couple there. yards deep. And he'll Ooh. take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Sooner offense back out, ready for their next possession. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what it's like. Oh, I got my missed it. In that locker room. And I, I missed it. I to make something <laughs> more important than it actually yes. is. Right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But well, this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Oh. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive. Thank but this God. is going to wind up incomplete. Well, this secondary has done such a good job of frustrating these receivers tonight. Another example right there on the deep ball. Sometimes when the sun goes down and it's just the bright lights in the stadium, there's a little extra spring in their step, doesn't it? And that's what we're seeing from the defenders. Doesn't matter with man or zone. Deep ball, short ball. That was a deep one there. They're making plays on the football, contesting everything. Come on, defense. 16 yards, a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? A gain of three, second down. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. 
Looking to throw on second down. Fulton. That is caught right at the 10 yard line. And they are able to stop it, but he does take it all the way to the two. A gain there of 21 yards. Here are the Sooners now first and goal. On the ground, Godfrey. And he is in. Damn it. Touchdown Sooners. Taking it in from two yards out. As his guys are back within a single score. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency yet relaxed enough to get it done. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. About set for their next drive, the Texas offense at the line. But Charles, so much of this offense the last few years centering around the combination of Marcus Washington and Isaiah Streets. Streets saying Washington's like a second brother to him. And, of course, many know the story. Isaiah's older brother, Ezekiel, tremendous athlete in his own right, but lost too soon to leukemia a year ago next week at the age of 20. And that is really a gut-wrenching story, as you know. And you look back at their high school days, right here in Texas, just outside of Houston. Zeke was the star quarterback, a four-year starter, 8,000 passing yards. Isaiah, a year younger, he was the receiver. The two of them told recruiters, you know we're a package deal, so if you're coming to get us, you're getting both of us. And Zeke actually recruited by both of these teams playing here tonight. And the two had dreams of playing for a national championship together, and now Isaiah with a chance to fulfill at least part of that dream. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. To throw from his end zone. Fulton in trouble, and the ball's out. It's in the end zone loose. And this will be gathered up in the end zone, and that's a defensive touchdown. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave them a comfortable lead. Extra point right down the middle. And a lead now up to 14. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. I got to do better with my... The Oklahoma uh, offense ready for their next drive. And they've got to be still reeling from the events of a moment ago. What a turn on that last play. Knock it on the door. You're about to take it in. You think you got some points on the board. Instead, you cough it up and watch them take it the rest of the way to the opposite end zone. That's a two-score swing that you just gave up. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there. Need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran now a nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is in running back drop. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw. Fulton, and that is incomplete. This defense is helping me out. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Fielded just inside the 20. 
That'll be I got to better as a 53-yard punt. <laughs> and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Longhorns come up here to begin their next drive. And offensively here, you wouldn't know it by looking at it that Marcus Washington is not in the game. That thought that maybe they would simplify the game plan? <laughs> forget it. Yeah, forget it is right. Well, no, True that he doesn't have the game reps, but he definitely knows the plays. He's run them for four years, totally familiar with his offense, and now he's executing. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. The Longhorns come up first and 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Come on. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Back to throw now on second and 10. And his throw is incomplete. Come on! He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Back to throw. Looking deep downfield. And this is taken in at the five. Ooh. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. Here are the Longhorns now on first, and he is in. Touchdown, Longhorns. Jermaine Slay. His second touchdown of the night. And the Longhorns add on to that lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. The Sooner offense back out, ready for their next possession. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and ten. Space to maneuver at the 40. Oh, he sheds himself free. The 30. Ah, shit. Pass the 20. And he will score. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Not a whole lot to recap on that drive. Just one play, 75 yards to the house. Yeah, it's a long way to go. Remember, rarely is it a straight line, now 75 high. yards, too. Got 14. a little extra in there. So whatever the final number is, a well-deserved seat on the bench, a little oxygen if he wants it as well. Fielded about a yard deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. About set for their next drive, the Texas offense at the line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Again, the underlying story here, no snaps in four years. It seems kind of hard to believe. You almost wonder if there's some type of lingering animosity between quarterback and coach, because there certainly have been a few of those 56-7 to type games over the last few years, but much like the Patriots in the NFL, where you see Tom Brady take almost every snap, even at his age, that was the case with Marcus Washington. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. They'll look to throw here on first down. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Back now here on EA Sports. 
As we've got the final quarter upon us, we get ready to start the fourth. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. He continues to make plays, and he looks terrific out there right now. But what I really liked, the way he's controlled this huddle, playing with a lot of confidence, and that confidence has been transmitted to the rest of the team. They'll look to throw here. And the oh, tip fuck. there altered the ball flight, Come and it on. falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Second and 10. And intercepted. Oh, Maybe the turning point they need. Picked off inside the five. First week of the preseason, probably not the pass, the impression that the rookie wants to leave right there. Yeah, no probably about it, because that's not what you want to do to try and press your new coaching staff, try to impress your locker room, and most importantly, yourself. Probably spent all night last night saying, don't throw an interception early. Make sure you take care of the football. But now he's got it out of the way. Hopefully he can just settle in and move on. A nice gain of 21 yards. Oklahoma now with a first and ten. Operating from the gun. Fulton looking middle, and it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to the QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just let him bleed the game out that way. And he will have a first down as they get into the ground at the 37. Third and medium, they opted to run instead of pass, and it worked. First down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, Fulton. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. It's a gain of seven, and that'll make it a second down. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Running it with gold. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Delayed give there out of the gun. Defense was ready. Yeah, and I'm not a big fan of a draw play out of the shotgun formation because the quarterback's not having much action where he's getting away from the line of scrimmage. He's catching the football, making a little head fake, and then handing it off. You should be able to read it as they did there. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Now left side on the swing pass. And some room to work. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They give him 15 more, and it's another first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. It kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Looking to throw. Fulton. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Sooner touchdown. From 13 yards out, as his guys are back within a single score. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play quarter. drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. Right, exactly right, and if you have that 
one to five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, like uh, yeah. yeah, you know, it doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> The Longhorns come up here to begin their next drive. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Now a second keep timeout running. called for by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. He's still fighting forward. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. We'll likely put an end to this thing. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. I know we're in the era of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space. But there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle. And, you know, late in this game, he wants the football in his hands. He's had a good day. Victory very much in sight now as they'll take a knee. And with a third and 13 here, the defense in a dime look. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. So behind a solid performance in the first college start for their senior quarterback, the Texas Longhorns are moving on to play for a national title on Monday, January the 7th. That was close. Proud of you. Thank you, sir. That was a gutsy performance out there tonight. You took us to a national championship, but nobody, and I mean nobody, expected you to. And what it's worth, I'm really glad you stayed four years ago. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, baby, we going to the chip. Whew. One more game, baby. We got this, man. Oh, yeah. Football is my life, man. But you got to stay grounded in what's important. So I got a little surprise for you. Isaiah! Ha-ha! <laughs> M! Looking good! Oh, Thank you. Oh. Absolutely. There's no way I could, uh... Absolutely. Is that magenta? Fuchsia? What color is that? <laughs> okay. Hey, I bet he probably did that uh, off the board, huh? Yeah. But Emily has the best games. Okay. If you had a unicorn, would you want its mane to be purple or pink? Well. Hmm. I'm going to pink. Well, these are both stuff, but good options. I'm gonna do pink, no question. Definitely pink. <laughs> pink, no question. <laughs> no, look. You see, look, 
you don't you don't pick from the options given, right? The game is in the name, off the board. Off the board. Nah, okay. oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. If I had a unicorn, I'd have a mane that matches his horn. Silver. Mm -hmm. I go with Onyx. Ah, Onyx. <laughs> okay. I told you she's a pro. <laughs> Hey, how are you? How that was not really sad. Hi. Talk to you. She's too shy to ask. Like, Emily wanted to know if you could do something for her in the national championship game. Yeah, of course. Anything. She wanted you to throw three touchdowns. Three? I thought I said four. Four touchdowns? Oh. <laughs> Is, is that okay? Well, four touchdowns is a lot. Uh, yeah, but how can you turn down the space? Get that. But I'll see what I can do. Yes. Don't, don't worry. They'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you I got to throw four touchdowns in a game. It's good to see you again. It's nice to meet you. You too. Alright. Right. Touchdown. I got the touchdown. We're days away from the national champion. Can I skip? 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 Can Manage the game. Don't make the big mistake. I think they have a real shot. I do. Kyle, we don't like managers of the game here at the table. Very boring, just like your shirt. I feel you, but I disagree. The team has a ton of talent, but they're going to need this dude to make some plays. They're not going to win if they hand the ball off 50 times. This would be nice. You, Peter Schrager, mm -hmm. do you think he'll rise to the shot? I do. As, as long as the pressure doesn't get to him. Yeah, for real. He's about to feel that pressure. Listen, there's a lot of weight on his shoulders right now. He punches his ticket to the NFL. He loses, and we'll see, I guess. And then if you're a coach, how do you handle this? What do you say to a kid that has so much to lose on that field? Hey, can I talk to you a minute? Yeah, sure, coach. You know, I know it's hard to shut out all the noise. It's a lot of pressure. And the only thing that we can control is what's right in front of us. And what's right in front of us is a game of football. Same rules as always. So you got to take a step back. Right? You got to breathe it in. You find a way to appreciate this moment, this, this time with your teammates, take in the crowd, Man, you do that, and, and everything gets real quiet. All right? So breathe. Take it in. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Gotta throw four touchdowns. I got you, Griffin. Awesome. Yeah. I could barely yeah. throw a touchdown yeah. after yeah. this. Shit. Throw four touchdowns? That's impossible. I couldn't even barely throw one touchdown. I had to settle on my defense and my running back, my offense. I almost went for a touchdown, but look what happened. I got intercepted, so if I can't throw one touchdown, what makes you think I can throw we a four? We crown a champion tonight here at Levi's Stadium oh, in Santa shit. Clara for the college football playoff national championship game. As we'll see the Clemson Tigers taking on the Texas Longhorns. This is tough. It's saved already, so I'm probably just going to exit. This one's gonna be tough. You know, I'll be right back real quick. I gotta do something.
my AC on. It's not fucking hot. Alright. Here we go. Here we go, the matchup we've all been waiting for. Number so now I guess my goal is to make get four touchdowns. Four touchdowns in this damn game. That'll be taken in the end zone. So and no run back now here. Four this will be a touchback and it comes out to the twenty-five yard line. First and ten now for Clemson. Cooper now from the gun, he'll throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. Clemson, of course, back in the college football playoff for the fourth consecutive year. Champions in the 2016 season, trying to make it two titles in three years if they can get things done. Cooper will look to throw it. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A big play on the catch and run, covering 34 yards. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now Cooper looks to throw. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. On first down, Jewel. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. Thomas has got it complete. And he takes it into the end zone across the chalk. Now there is a flag down. Damn it. But I think that's offsides on the defense. Yeah, I think that's going to stand, partner. And yes, they want the points, so they will decline the penalty. No question there. You don't think they spent a couple seconds mulling over with the penalty? I don't even know why they asked the sideline. Not at all. When you put the ball in the end zone on a takeaway, take the points and keep moving. An extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 7-0. So after the touchdown, Clemson back out there to kick this thing away. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Down 7 nothing. Work to do already as he gets set to begin college game number two. A first down run, not going to get him a whole lot. Maybe a yard. Yeah, it looks like just one yard there. So that'll bring up second and nine. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands, having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. This old adage, partner, don't judge the book by its cover, because this guy, he takes the mantra that he'll go down with a brisk gust of wind and sets it on its head. Great effort there to break a tackle and come up with a nice game. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. to throw now on first down. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. But that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, he'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. 
That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Hey, third got down, the field. you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So, yes, it's only three, but at least they're able to answer back after giving up the touchdown to start the game. Yeah, I like the observation there because getting some points on the board, very positive for them. Feel a little bit better about things because if you don't score, you potentially have opened the door for them to score again, and then you're down 14. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac. Did you trade sixes for threes? Things are going to work out in your favor. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's Cooper. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Four yards to pick up, first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he get a good head of steam going. Yeah, that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and our drive continues here to start quarter number two on second down now. Jewel, after getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Back to throw. Cooper. And unable to connect. Thank God. Incomplete. Thank God. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Fans do love the long ball, don't they? And he already found his guy once. Tried to give him another chance there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Couldn't connect. But as you alluded to, he does have that touchdown from earlier. Trying to keep him in the rhythm. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They'll run it now out of the gun. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, Come you on. the result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Really good, smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down sticks, and being able to make a play on the football and bat it down. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll run with Jewel. Now he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 22 yards there, a first down. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. 
but how about the whole offensive line being involved? See on the left side where the play was going, where they call play side, but how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt them. Is the biggest key. Yeah, I may figure out something else later. Gotta get better though. Not gonna give me new ones. I might as well continue. We crown a champion tonight here at Levine Stadium in Santa Clara for the college football playoff national championship game. As we'll see the Clemson Tigers taking on the Texas Longhorns. Here we go, the matchup we've all been waiting for. Number one versus number two, and off we go in the college football playoff national championship in Santa Clara. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. It's his second career start, and a national championship is on the line as the Longhorns get set here. Now a play fake here on first down. Well, he's going to take a shot right away. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. And they're able to get this one across the, the 35. 11 yards there, first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they're in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Here's a first and ten, Texas. Back to throw here. Over the middle, complete. That's Young. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Nice methodical opening drive here. They're already in the field goal range. They're in a good spot. You know that people just like to take a shot in this part of the field. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure. They'll set up to throw. And that will be incomplete. Oh, come on. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them... They remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they have three first downs and three points. 
to throw is Cooper on first down. And he's got some space here. And now off to the races down the right side. And this results in six. Touchdown. Those free safeties, they get to sit back there if they've got good pass rushers like this team does. Read like a book. He read it like a book and took it in for six. And if they use their eyes well and their anticipation skills, they can make big plays just as what we saw. A free safety's dream. Follow the football, go to it, and take it the other way. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. They look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too it. And he will score. Touchdown, Clemson. Donnie Simpson. 38 yards as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. So the quarterback drops to throw, looks over, and boom, a guy that wide open. He has to be thinking, wait a minute, this is some kind of a dream. This is too easy. Yeah, a great dream, one you don't want to wake up from. But for the defense, almost feels like there was a bust in coverage. Fielded about a yard deep. And a nifty return there as he's all the way up past the 40-yard line. Now, that's the kind of return you're looking for. To get to that spot on the field, that allows you to do a lot of things on offense. About set for their next drive, the Texas offense at the line. A nice-looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. On first down, nothing opening up really on the running play. Give him maybe a yard, and it'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch route. Only three yards though. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys and plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in the bunch. I mean, we talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. Okay. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the side line because when you score a touchdown you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive when you score points it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there Clemson now with a first and ten on the carry it's Jewel he's got a first down and then some inside the 40 and finally brought down at the 38 and a nice carry there of 15 yards Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Looking to throw. Cooper, he gets it to Thomas. 
10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and our drive continues here to start quarter number two as they've got it second and seven. Here's a second and seven. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. That's a gain of 14. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. But anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen, because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. I think that's a big-time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he's able to bat it away. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Cooper on third and two to the end zone, but it's incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah, what happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. The Longhorns come up here to begin their next drive. But Charles, we talked in the semifinal about Isaiah Street's brother, Ezekiel, lost due to leukemia exactly one year ago today. But since then, Isaiah's been active in trying to help those who are going through the same struggles his brother went through. He formed a real bond, in fact, over the summer with one of them, 11-year-old cancer patient Emily Atwood of Centerville, Texas. And we're told that Emily and her father, Tom, made the two-hour drive up to Arlington a week ago to watch their semifinal victory and got to spend some time afterwards with the All-American receiver and his new quarterback. And folks out there should see how Isaiah's face lights up when the discussion turns to the young lady. He calls him and the inspiration that he takes from her fight. It's really something special to see. He makes a point to call her from the locker room after every game. And he says, listen now, she's not afraid to tell me if I do something wrong. She'll protect me in a heartbeat. No, I got it's it. It's good to see a young man who wants to get back, one who gets it. And I oh, you got to be kidding me. Isaiah Street you can't challenge it. Emily, too, said to be watching from her hospital room. A surgery scheduled for today, and now she's got a receiver and a quarterback who want her to know that they are thinking of her. And, of course, we're thinking of her as well and wish her all the best. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race, and he will score. Touchdown, Longhorns. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one. I felt that that other play was, was, was complete. Like Come on. They're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, I can't, I can't even do replays or challenges. Point after a point down the middle. And that makes it a 17-10 ah. score. So now after the touchdown, the Longhorns get ready to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. They go play action here on first down, and that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Gonna hand to Jewel. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. 
Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Back to throw. Cooper. No way yes. to escape, and he goes down. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner Finally, than I got the quarterback. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And it'll be a 51-yard punt that time. About set for their next drive, the Texas offense at the line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he'll hit his tight end, Walker. And they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Sparks. 11 yards for number 11. The Longhorns come up first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They certainly thought they had him surrounded and probably thought they were going to get him on the ground and get the sack, but he was able to elude that. And even though it threw it incomplete downfield, if you're a defensive back, you're loving the pressure that you're seeing from your front. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They're going to look to throw. And oh, it's complete. What a catch at the seven. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. It's for when we see guys like that make that type of a catch. Not fair goes through my brain. That size, that speed, and now they're acting like wide receivers too. Yeah, yeah tight end one-handed catches. They're kind of like wide receiver one-handed catches nowadays. Just not right. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And that's gonna get at least one fucking that. touchdown, guys. Met a team it. yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of the half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. That'll be taken in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, this will probably be the last play of the quarter. What a story this would be. Texas one half away from a national championship. Man, this is tough. Hey. Hey, you need to play better in the second half, all right? What? Hey, just give me the ball, all right? Let me do my thing. I agree. Got it. Hey, you know how much this means to me, right? Of course I do. Then make it happen. Okay, man.
Just one half remains in the college football season as we begin the second half of this national championship game. That's field yeah, in the end zone. Defense. And the no defense run kicking back my here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, he lost the ball. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because... This is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, the teammate is able to come up with the ball. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Looking to throw. Cooper. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. I want to rent. I'll try and pass. The Longhorns come up here to begin their next drive. They've got to like their position. They lead this championship game, two quarters to play. What's the course of action in this second half? I think you continue to show your quarterback that you've got faith in him. Continue to run the offense the way you did in the first half. Continue to give him opportunities. But behind his back, head coach is telling the offensive play caller, if you see any moments where it feels too big for him, be ready to dial this game plan back. And Walker has it. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. So give them the yardage on the pass and half the distance to the goal line. Because they're inside the 30. So now you don't march off the full 15, right? You have half the distance to the goal. In any event, that's precious real estate given up. So now then the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. He'll look to throw. That is caught for a Longhorns touchdown. Jeremiah Young. There to make the grab. And the Longhorns add on to that lead. And a play fake down near the goal line here worked out well. Anytime you can make them think that you're going to run the ball and go to that play action pass, you see the end result. Usually a touchdown. Is that harder? Is the play fake harder to defend for the defense near the goal line or no? Because there's not as much room to work with. It is harder because down near the goal line, you're thinking much more of a running play, especially if people run out big formations. So it is harder to defend. ready to get after it one more time and they're coming off a three and out my friend I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving okay so how do you do that how do you shake things up you look at what you've called before realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so someone well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area to throw down, second and ten. They'll wind up getting ten back as that sets them up for third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially 
if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. And he will Wait, what? a touchdown. A big play there. Taking it in. And his guys are able to cut into that deficit. After allowing that last score, the defense knows they've got to tighten things up. Otherwise, they'll let them right back into the game. Damn it, did I mess they'll up? Go for just one here as it's up and good. And that will shave one more off this lead. So here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Oh, this the fumble at the I two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. About set for their next drive, the Texas offense at the line. So, C.D., you look at our quarterback. He's said it. He's been consistent. This is it. I'm graduated. I'm not going to go the grad transfer route. It's time for me to move on. If you're an NFL scout, do you see enough in him to think he's got a future in this league with this little experience that we've seen? Every scouting instinct tells me to tell him to go the graduate transfer route. But you know how it is nowadays. And look, he's played awfully well against two top five defenses. Someone's going to take a shot and give this guy a look. Well, several teams need a quarterback. You think about the Cardinals. No, they're going to be picking number one. But Giants figure to be in the market. Broncos, Bengals, possibly the Raiders. So there's going to be some teams looking. And don't forget, backups are at a premium in this league. And this guy could be a developmental player. Draft him. Let him work in your organization for a while. Learn the playbook. Sit for a while because down the road, he could turn out to be a gem. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. From the shotgun now, here's an inside deal. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. A gain of 13, it's a first down. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. And that play was what every defense is wary of. The big strike attempted downfield, but they were in excellent position. They didn't get fooled, or they didn't come up with the interception, was able to bat the ball down third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now the 22 is the line to gain here on third down they'll drop the throw and down inside the 15 shy of the 10 the 15 yards through the air and a first down Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback with the deflection, if you miss, might be big. And he will take this in for a Longhorn touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Longhorns add on to that lead. So now two touchdown passes thrown, and we talked earlier about the young cancer patient, Emily Atwood. She asked him a week ago for four touchdown passes. Heck, he's already halfway there. Yeah, Isaiah Streets relayed that story to us. It's a pretty tall task for a second career start. But the way he's looked these last couple of games, he's not phased by the request, is he? He's halfway there. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it. I almost away. got it. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. Yeah, he's not a team anymore. I just cut him. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But some, hey, listen, there's some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. He lost two there, and it's third down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage to be found. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Now Cooper operating from the gun. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 49. Third and long that time, he was trying to make something happen, but a little too risky. Well, the field tilted on him, and what I mean by that is what you said. Third and long, got to push it downfield to try and pick up the first down. Defensive backs live for this situation, and they took advantage of the young man right there. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Oh, they got to throw two more right touchdowns. The it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. The man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A few were with us for the semifinal. We told the story. I mean, this is a quarterback who was heavily recruited out of high school four years ago. On signing day, had all the hats in front of him. People were... And it's intercepted at the goal line. Good positioning, and it's picked off. Through an opening, and there he goes. 30, 10... And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. This game's still fairly well in hand, but I think now you, you go conservative, don't you? Go into your shell, just run the football. I think you have to, but you also have to tell your backs, make sure you're really protecting the football because you're going to run into a stacked defensive front, which is why they were throwing the football you know, before. I'm not surprised they're not going to make sure they backs, you know, really beat up in that situation. Now, good luck to them. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Longhorns come up here to begin their next drive. Be there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. Right, You're not the thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Do my eyes deceive me or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one, despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know. Well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 yards on that play. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick out, things that they consider safe. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. A really good pick up of 28 yards. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down for a nice little game. 
A very valuable nine-yard pickup, and now they're set up a little better here for third and goal. Well, lots of praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third and goal. Looking to throw. That is caught for a Longhorns touchdown. It's the fullback there to make the grab. And the Longhorns add on to that lead. Is it okay if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over? Because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit-crushing, wasn't it? And now you can, you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I think you're exactly right. You could see them sag on their sideline, and I think this one might just be over. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back. Run and go back. It totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Here's Cooper looking to throw on second down. And this is Simpson with a catch. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Cooper now on first and 10. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A good gain of 12 yards that time. First and 10 now for Clemson. Cooper will look to throw it. He's going to let it fly. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Just nothing there again. He's been sacked multiple times. We've seen the interceptions, of course. Uh, he's really been through the ringer, hasn't he? And what we've seen is a defense that's well-coordinated. The front and the back really in sync. The front putting on the pressure. The backside being ball hawks and picking passes off. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 yards on the play. First down. From the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Now Cooper looks to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that earns him a fresh set of downs. Back to throw is Cooper, throwing on first down. And he will score. Touchdown, Clemson. A 22-yard touchdown grab. And his guys are able to close that gap just a bit. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally on that one. So two scores down. Time definitely not an ally. But here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Still fighting for more. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. As they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. Let's 
They come out here in the eye. Here are the Longhorns now on first and goal. That one looks like he'll throw here. And he will take this in for a Longhorn touchdown. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Longhorns add on to that lead. I got the four Where touchdowns. Go, Charles. Apparently all she had to do was ask. How about that? His fourth touchdown pass in this championship game. Give her credit for asking. Give him credit for living up to it. And I bet they're both relieved that there won't be another game. She might ask for eight touchdown passes in that one. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Tiger offense ready to get after it one more time. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand. All right. like, Who cares? Let's go out here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as they continue to as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. How about this story? Behind a quarterback who had never taken a snap at a college football game until nine days ago. They are the national champions. Please turn your attention to the podium at midfield for the presentation of the College Football Playoff National Championship Trophy as we present your College Football National Champions, the Texas Longhorns. Jack Ford. Talk about a long shot. And as a man who's known as the quarterback whisperer, and I suggest you trademark that, by the way, um, how are you feeling about your quarterback right now? I tell you, this kid's amazing. He worked around the clock to prepare for this game. i never seen anything like it. And I am so proud of what he's done, and under this kind of pressure. Hope all you NFL scouts out there are paying attention, because this kid's special. Come on. Deserve it, son. Congratulations. Coach, this is you. This is great. Thank you. A perfect end to a too short season. You're leaving here a champion. I, 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 it's better than I ever thought it would feel. <laughs> I can't even describe it, really. It's just to be up on this stage, celebrating with these guys. It's, it's perfect. It's just perfect. It is a perfect end, but it seems like you put up a pretty good case that it shouldn't be today. How do you feel about that? I, hey, I, I think I gave myself a shot. If the NFL comes calling, I'll pick up the phone. But this guy over here, this guy, he's a trophy man. Absolutely. Isaiah Streets, we are all aware of the loss of your brother and what it took to be here today. But can you tell us, in this moment, how you're feeling right now? It's a lot, lots of feelings, Taylor. Uh, I made a promise to my brother that I was gonna... <laughs> you know, none of this, none of this would have been possible without this man right here. This dude came into an impossible situation. He's got heart. I love you, man. Hey, I love you, man. See? This was for you, baby! Yeah! This was for you! Yeah. Let's go! A lot of emotions out on the field tonight. This is what football is all about. About getting hit and getting back up. And as you can see in a season, it was characterized by overcoming. These guys did just that and won a national championship. Back to you guys. Cool. I'm really trying to see on this fucking time. Damn it. It's hot. It's hot as a motherfucker. Oh, my knee, bitch. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, he's actually right here. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hello? Hey, how's it going? It's Emily's dad. 
Look, I, I know that you got a lot on your plate, and I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I, I did want to tell you that Emily's out of her surgery, and she is doing great. She got to see the, the game and everything. You have made a fan for life in her. Thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, please, have Emily stay in touch. I will. I will. Thank you. All right, bye. Take care. I hear you, and I've been hearing you for the last 15 minutes. I'm on top of it. How many times do you need to... Yes, I'm on top of it. I'm meeting with... I've got a few other guys to meet this week, and then I know that there's a time restraint. I understand that. Thanks for taking the time to meet me. Yes. Well, I, I know what he wants. I understand what he wants. He's told me what he wants. You don't have to tell me what he wants as well, okay? okay. Just Can you hold on for a second? Okay. Thank you. No, just be quiet. I take any of the other top quarterbacks available, and I get praise, and I get to keep my job. Hmm? I pick you, a player that barely even picked up a ball in college, and then I I'm nuts. And the seat that I've got to sit on gets red hot. So why don't you tell me why you should even be on my radar? When I found out I wasn't going to start in college, it became clear that I should transfer if I wanted to play at the next level, but I didn't. Because my word means something. I'm proud of my decision to stick. If I was running a team, I think I would want players that were willing to compete. Hey, I'm gonna have to call you back. Yes, I'll have to call you back. <laughs> I love you too, Dad. Are you for real? You know, you and I have a mutual friend, Mr. Jack Ford. He and I served on the same staff in St. Louis. What do you think he would have to say about your ability to uh, lead a locker room? Navigating a locker room can be tricky. I do my best. I try to find a balance between being the locker room guy and then the guy that the coaches can rely on to get the team bought in. It's hard. You know, Jack had some concerns about your leadership. But I'm not seeing that. Little inside scoop. Uh, the owner wants someone with the measurables. So you go out there and you impress. You'll be on our radar. I can do that. Hold me down. Thank you. The Giants? Really? Okay. Hand over your phone. I want to check your internet history. You want me to give you my phone? Is that just like normal procedure? You bet it is. Give anyone your phone. If someone asked for your playbook, would you give them that too? No. What? What? You have something to hide? Look, son. This interview is about transparency. I think I'm being quite transparent. Not transparent enough. 
You're on a mountain in Alaska on a bus going 100 miles an hour. Where are you sitting on the bus? Bus in Alaska. In the back of the bus. Back of the bus? Why? I don't know. I can help people escape out the back. Are leaders in the front of the bus, the middle of the bus, or the back of the bus? Leaders are where they need to be. Interesting answer. I figure back of the bus, saving people makes me look selfless, shows that I'm a team player. Good answer. The correct answer should have been wherever I'm needed. That was weird with the dolphins. That's weird. Well, anyway, I'm gonna end it, so. I already saved it. Everything looks good. I'm out of here. Uh... Funny how many eyes are on us right now, huh? Alright. Sorry, save, so I'm fine. Yeah, whatever. Go to head out. I will see you guys later. Alright, that's fine. That's fine. Alright. I'm out of here. Peace out. See y'all tomorrow.